statement, making this statement, I, I was wrong. I deserved it. I deserve for him to correct me. I deserve for him to show me the, the direction I needed to go. And when we look at the scriptures, God provides for us every single day. The Holy Bible is there presented as a roadmap, as an example for us. And sometimes we do wrong. And when we look at the scriptures, we see what the scripture says. And he gives us the guidance and the direction that we need to understand that this is what the word says. Amen. It is his, it is his ways. And it's <coughs> follow his ways. Amen. We have to go to the example. In my, in my dad's house, if I was going to have a good day, I had to abide by his rules. Amen. Sometimes we don't think, of, when we think about it, uh, when, when the scripture when the scripture talks about, well, let me check this one. Uh, there, there's a, a songs that talk about the spirit and the bride. Amen. Everyone understands that, that we're the bride of Christ. Amen. That we have to prepare ourselves every single day uh, to get ready. So uh, I'll just give you this example. I've got to uh, this young man who's a who's a prince. He is he's full of royalty, and and he can just go and find anybody that he wants to. So he goes down to this little village, and he finds this little this lady, and she's not very you know she's kind of you know she's she's cute, but yes she doesn't always act very cute, and she she's kind of you know she's not ugly, but she can present herself to be ugly sometimes. And, but he goes up to her, goes into this little, into her little hutch and her little uh, village and everything, and it's run down and it's dirty and it's nasty. But he goes in there and gets on one knee. And he goes in there and he proposes to her and says, I want you to be my bride. Mm -hmm. And so as he's looking at it, he's going, I want you to be my bride. But listen, I, I, I'm coming back to get you. We're going to be married and, and all this stuff. But I'm coming back to get you a little bit later on. But I've got some things I've got to do. So he leaves, and as he leaves and he goes away, uh, you know, she's expecting and she's looking for it. But as time passes on, she finds herself uh, going about her daily activities. And maybe she's looking at these guys, or maybe she's flirting with them and talking to them and all this stuff. And, and she never mentions one time that she's engaged. She's not quite, you know, being truthful the way she is. And, and this isn't a story. I'm telling you the true life, uh, uh, the true life and the experience of Jesus Christ today. We are the bride. I mean, He came to each one of us and He said, "Here I am. I want to. I want you to be a part of me. I want to be engaged to you, but I need you to carry on and do everything you're supposed to do and wait and look for me." Amen. Because I'm coming back again. Yeah. But we find ourselves kind of like doing our daily activities, and then sometimes we'll go over here and we'll whisper in the world's ear. And we'll flirt a little bit with this part of the world and we'll be involved in this part of the world. Never one time mentioning that we are engaged to the Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. And he's coming back. He's going to come back for us and we're going to have this great ceremony, this great wedding day. But we're not paying attention to who we really are. We are engaged people ready to receive our, our Heavenly Father. We are already engaged to the Heavenly Father and we accept that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He's coming back. Amen. And when he comes Praise the Lord. Pretty. You know, we're, when you look at our situation, we may look at the, the body of Christ today. We can be pretty, but sometimes we can be pretty ugly. Oh, hush now. Amen. We look at the scriptures and we see what the scriptures tell us every single day. And we know what they say, but we're flirting with the world instead of following the rules of it that have been given to us by our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Brother. What is written in the Word of God is to be always, and it doesn't change. Amen. So he tells us that this is what he wants us to do. He presents himself and he says, here I am. I am coming before you now. Will you accept me? Thank you, Lord. Amen. And if we've accepted him, we should be anticipating his return. Thank you. His Father's Amen. Day. The most ultimate father that we can ever, ever possibly have is the greatest role model that we can have. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that's our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He give us great instructions. If we want to uh, please him, then we have to obey, obey his word, his rules. Amen. And when he gives us our commandments, it's our responsibility to follow the commandments that he's given us. Amen. He's given us this direction. I have a, I, I've got a great father. I love my, I love my father so much. He, he has presented to me some things that, that I can, I take back from, uh, take from him and that has been instilled in me. I don't like to be late to anything. I like to be early. My 
dad, when he worked over here at Dover Products, he got to work three hours early. He drank two pots of coffee, did all of his paperwork, got everything ready in his office, and, and all, all prepared before he even clocked in one time. He gave everything he had to the places that he worked. He was in the military for 22 years. He gave everything he had to the military. Because he knew that if he was going to do something, he was going to be committed to it. And he instilled that in me, that no matter what I did, no matter where I worked, whatever the situation was, when I was on their time, I was to give them everything that I had. Amen. I work today for the Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. When I worked for the hospital, I gave them every everything I had. When they asked for me to do something, I did everything that I had to do. Sometimes even at the... At the, at the, uh, uh, the my family suffered sometimes because I had to do what the hospital wanted me to do. I have a, I, I, my boss today is the Heavenly Father. I work for him. Brother Lord, he's a pretty good boss, ain't he? <laughs> Always good to me. Right? Yeah, amen. But you know what? I still got guidelines. I still got things that I have to do That's right. yeah. in order to please him. That's right. Amen. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've got guidelines. Amen. And you work for the Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. You may not be full-time in ministry, but if you accepted him and you accepted the call he's told us, he said, go you to all the world and preach the gospel. He said, told each one of us that we're supposed to be about the Father's uh, business, to tarry until he comes, to do everything we're supposed to do until he arrives. We've got responsibility to do. And we've got a mission. We've got things that we have to do in order to follow his direction. And he gives us those plans and those everything that we need is right there before us. Amen. We, we have a father today that we can look up to and say, I, I am so thankful that he chose me. Amen. The Heavenly Father picked us. And he gave us the example. Praise the Lord. The chorus of that song says, lay your burdens down. Because we're in the Father's house. Amen. Amen. He, yep. and another part of it says, check your shame at the door. It's not welcome here anymore. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. So in other words, he's saying, when you come into my house, you're coming into a place that doesn't, that, that you don't have to, uh, it doesn't recognize shame. It doesn't recognize depression. It doesn't recognize anxiety. It doesn't recognize whether you've got money or you don't. What he recognizes is that you have a right relationship with him. Amen. 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 And all those other things don't mean anything. Good what job. means the most is that we have that relationship with him. Amen. Amen. That's how much the Father loves. Amen. My dad today, I'm going to go see him here in a little while. And when I do, he's not going to, I'm not going to walk in there and he's not going to say, here, I need you to give me so much money before you can come in. Right? He's not going to, he's, he's not going to, uh, you know, judge me for anything. He's just going to say, come in. Because that's the time. Amen. Amen. That's what the Heavenly like Father is every single day of our life. When we wake up in the mornings and we begin to call on Him and we begin to talk to Him, all He wants is us to have that communication. To say, here I am. Yeah. Here I am, Heavenly Father. Thank I'm here Lord. to give you some time. I want to just spend a little time with you. And I want to I want to find myself and I want to hear Him say, well done, that good and faithful servant. Right. The Lord said it a lot of times. He said, how in the world uh, uh, am I supposed to hear the how uh, well done, that good and faithful servant? Be a good and faithful servant. Amen. Yeah. If you want to hear those words, then do, the, do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> follow the direction we're supposed to follow. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think I can express to my father enough the example that he gives, uh, that he was for me. Amen. Amen. Of how he taught me and how he did. Now, now not everything that he did was right. Because he didn't serve God all of my, uh, my all my childhood. But I can tell you that when I found it, when he found Jesus as his Lord and Savior, things changed. Amen. And I began to see him and who he was and how he was. Amen. And exactly what he what he says. And you know, this this other part, and I know I, this isn't my message. Uh, this is just what God put on my because I was up here praying and I was uh, I'm gonna be transparent with you right now. Amen. I was up here praying Hallelujah. and I was casting the, the, that, that spirit of, uh, uh, of decisiveness and, and that spirit of, of anxiety and, and, and all of the, the things that come into the church that, that causes us not to be focused on Him. On. And I was up there praying come and saying, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I bind yeah. you. You can't have any control in this service. Hallelujah. There are people here that need to hear the Hallelujah. word of God. And you don't Amen. have any power Amen. to control yes, yes, So yes, what yes, I'm yes, telling yes. you today, and as I'm being as transparent with you as open as we I Thank can't you, Lord. You. The enemy will do his very best to yes. keep you from where you need Amen. to be. He will cause you to, yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. Good job, brother. Good preaching. I, I knew he had the anointing on him, and that's the reason why I wanted to come and listen to him. I, wow, I knew he did. On. He's a preacher. The helpless find hope. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Love is in the room. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I have a question for you. Did you Thank bring you. love with you this morning? Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. You see, this happens to be God's house. Thank you, Lord. But we bring God in Amen. with us. Amen. Amen. He dwells right here. Thank you, Jesus. And God is love. Thank and if you, you didn't bring love in the room, then did you bring God with you? Ooh. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to apologize for that. When the Father's in the room, prison doors fly wide. Yeah, thank you, Lord. The dead come to life. Love is in the room. When the Father's in the room. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles take place. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. When the Heavenly Father is present in the room, anything is possible. Amen. Praise no matter what you're dealing with today, no matter what your situation happens Amen. to be today, can I tell you where the Father is in the room, anything the is possible. Amen. 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 You feel like everything is hopeless. You feel like there's nothing else that you can do. Can I tell you, if the Father's in the room, it can Amen. be done. Amen. Amen. We, we, we can look at our situations and see, just Thank as Darius, as I mentioned last week, Darius just had to say that if he could just get Jesus to follow him to his house, that he, although his daughter was sick, he knew that if he could just get to him and that he would come to his house, that his daughter would be well and be taken care of. Even in our situations today, if I can tell you that it may look like death's knocking at your door or everything around you is about to fall apart and everything, no, nothing is working like it's supposed to. Can I tell you that even when Darius reached the place where they told him that his, father, that his daughter was dead, he still understood that Jesus told him that he needed right, to right. Faith and he needed to believe and he needed to hold yeah. what God had in store. Come on, so even when things are going yeah. wrong and they're not actually the way they're supposed Thank to be, can Lord. I tell you Thank that it will just understand they may tell you that everything is hopeless, Thank everything's you. gone. You're about to lose everything. Hallelujah. You know. God is still. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He can Thank take you, care Lord. of your situations. But we have to follow him. Oh, in the Miracles Thank take you, Lord. place. The death come to Thank life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When the Father's in the room. Who would have thought that I was going to preach this morning on one song? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but it says, lay your burdens down. Thank you, Jesus. Here in the Father's house. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll say Amen. it again. Check your shame at the door. Amen. Can I ask the Lord? No. 
I've already done it all so far. That also means we got to check our egos at the door. That also means we got to we got to check our shame at the door. We got to check all of the things that don't match up with God. Amen. If we're in the in the Father's house and we're not following His direction, doing what He's asked to do, then we are in the wrong and we're in sin. We got to do what God tells us to do and follow His direction. I know that sounds very harsh and very hard, but God's word is plain and simple. And he tells us what we need to do and how we need to follow him. Sometimes we've got to put ourselves in check. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He didn't know what to do. Thank the you, Teenagers Jesus. in junior class heard this this morning. He didn't know what to do good and do it not to him and sin. Who is to him? Working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. To him. Yeah. To you and the Heavenly Father, you yeah, know it. If you know if it's right or wrong, you know that it's right or wrong. Amen. Amen. But when we choose not to follow his word, it falls on us. The last thing that I want to hear anybody say, and I know Brother Moore felt the same way, feels the same way today. The last thing I want to hear anybody say in heaven is, Brother Brian did not tell me Come on, the brother. truth. Amen. You're getting the truth today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our relationship with God means more than anything we've Thank got. Thank you, Jesus. Our Heavenly Father loves us more than my earthly father could ever dream of. And I know my earthly father loves me. Thank you, Jesus. But he loves, but our Heavenly Father loves us even more. I can't read this for you this morning. This will tie in. My scripture text that I have for you this morning, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really trying. Romans 8, 13 says, For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if ye there uh, through the Spirit do mortify de the deeds of the body, shall live. For as many are as dead by the Spirit of God, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For they have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, for they have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what the spirit uh, said there? Thank it you, says, Lord. for we have not received the spirit of bondage again yes. to fear. Yes. Amen. What he's saying Amen. is that when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, yes. he, he took all of that bondage that was wrapped around yes. us and all those things that was going there, and he says that those no longer are part of our life. He tells us that we're that he has adopted us, that we have been that we have been brought into him, and all of those things that the enemy once had you fooled and, and once had you uh, in bondage to, we no longer have to deal with those things anymore. Amen. He tell, in, in order for us to say again, means that one time they had us under that bondage. And amen. When we accepted him, we were freed from that. Yes. And in order to, yes. for again to happen means that you have to go back yes. to the things that you once had in your life Thank that you now are causing you to be bound down again. Yeah. Amen. I'll tell you this real quick. That if, uh, if you were set free from something, I, how many of you have ever been delivered from cigarettes or, you, or you've uh, quit smoking cigarettes? I've been told that once someone uh, uh, was no longer smoking or delivered or quit smoking cigarettes, that the very smell of that became very putrid to them, and yep. they couldn't stand it anymore. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna say that again because I want you to think spiritually. That once they were delivered and set free from that, or they quit that, the very essence, the very smell of that was putrid to them, and they could not stand it anymore. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He delivers us from those things that once had us bound. They Amen. became future to us. They should no yes. longer be a part of us, and we Amen. should no longer care to be involved in that at all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. In order for again to happen, what would mean that you have to go back to it? In other words, you start smoking again. If I'm going to the guys, I'm just, just throwing that as, a, as our example out. I've been told, too, and the researchers say that if you ever go back to that again, to that addiction, it's twice as hard for you to receive a breakthrough again. It is. So if we are uh, delivered from fear and we go back to the again and we go back to it, it becomes twice as hard for us to get shed of it. Thank you. Amen. He gives us a clear path. In a clear direction. But verse
Bless him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 16. But the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When we accept him, Thank we can you. tell that now we've got communication yeah. line with him. Amen. Verse 17 says, and if children, then heirs. And heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, so that it be that we the, that we suffer with Him, yes. that we may also glorify together. Yes. For I reckon I reckon that the suffering of the, His presence present time are the, not worthy to be compared with the glory which we shall be revealed Amen. in us. Thank you, Lord. He tells us plain and simple Thank that you, children. If we're the children of God, Amen. heirs. Amen. Heirs of God. Joint which heirs. makes us joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have a blood transfusion. Yes. Amen. Our DNA does not match our old DNA. Our DNA now matches the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We now have joint Thank heir God. with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. That means that you may once have this addiction, but can I tell you that you've, you you've laid that aside Thank and you've replaced all of those things that were in your mind and in your Amen. DNA that now you've replaced it with love, joy, peace, long suffering. You, uh, you begin to function and act as, as a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are royalty. Amen. I say it. Uh, the scripture tells say that we are a royal priesthood. Thank you, Jesus. I am a peculiar person. Thank you, Jesus. And I am proud of who I am. Amen. Join heirs with Praise Lord Jesus the Lord. Christ. Amen. Our DNA is not the same that it once was. In other words, fear is replaced with boldness. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it is. Anxiety is replaced with anticipation. Think about that. <laughs> the difference between anxiety and anticipation. Thank anxiety you. means that you're worried about the yeah. situation that's going on. Anticipation says, I can't wait to receive what God's Come got in store for me. Amen. Anticipate the next Break move that he's got for me. Anticipate yeah. the next yeah. place that he wants us to be. He yeah. may be uh, right now, and sometimes we can have a fear over not knowing what's next for our life, but if we anticipate it, we're looking forward to knowing that God has something great in store for me, Amen. that he wants to bless me above and beyond what I could ever dream of. Break anticipation Break puts us waiting on the situation to know that our heaven Yes. Yes. Thank you, control Jesus. over everything Amen. that we do. And Amen. because we belong to the Heavenly Father, we Hallelujah. can receive from Him today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I like to anticipate for something. Yep. One time I opened my Christmas gifts before Christmas time. And on Christmas morning, I was so disappointed because I already knew what was there. But I really like the thought of anticipating and being surprised about what I was going to get him for Christmas. Every morning, we'll wake up anticipating what God has in store for us. We can be excited about what the day in store is. Amen. Amen. We can replace death for life. Amen. He gives us the things that we need. We can break that generational curse that is held over our head. Yes. Amen. Isaac preached a message at youth camp, and he preached it last week as well, last Sunday night, where he, he told us what it what he felt like at times. Just give up. Nobody cares about you. You're going to make a mess of it anyways. Nobody cares if you're here or not. Anybody ever been there? feel worthless. Amen. That's the old curse. That's the DNA that, that Satan wants you to invest in. But God has got a different plan. Yes, he does. And he's got a different DNA for you today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know. Thank you, Lord. That today we're, we're celebrating fathers. The Galatians 4, 6 says, Because you are sons, God has sent forth you the spirit of his son mm -hmm. into your hearts, crying, mm -hmm. Father, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I backed myself into a corner here. <laughs> Welcome home.
But there was one time I was out at the old sanctuary. I was preaching, 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 I was preaching. Anybody get the idea? I was preaching. And on and on and on. And God just whispered to me and said, Would you please stop? Because I want to do something. Thank you, Lord. Thank God just whispered to me, would you please stop? I want to do something. Thank you, Lord. The Heavenly Father is here. Amen. Everybody Thank get you, that? Lord. Amen. Can you sense his presence? We don't Amen. always go on feelings. Right? We don't go on feelings. But sometimes you just know the Heavenly Father is here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm so grateful that he is present right now. Because where he is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Amen. So right now, you may be in bondage. You may be uh, feel like you're tied down. But can I tell you, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There is freedom right now for us to receive from him. If you feel like you're bound down, you feel like you're not where you need to be, can I tell you that freedom has to start somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. And then you just can't. You, freedom comes at a cost. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the Heavenly Father has already provided Thank you, Lord. that cost. He Thank said you, Jesus. the Heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. For that. He said Jesus Christ could pay that price for us. So freedom has already been paid for. All we've got to do is reach out. We've got to take him by the hand. There's Thank a difference. The Lord told me it was time to step down. He had a man waiting. <laughs> Forgiveness is one thing, but repentance is another. Amen. When we ask for forgiveness, He forgives us, but He wants us to have a repentant heart. He started coming to church. Turn our ways away from the old ways. He says, Old things are gone from us. Behold, all things have become new. How many of you need something new in your life? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, I'm going to stop right there. Praise the Lord. If you need new things in your life, the old things. Thank you, Lord. I had a fellow tell me one thing that I do. Everything that I do. This is all I know to do right now. The altars are open. Amen. Find you a place. If you want to kneel kneel at your seat, do that. If you want to stand and raise your hands, that's fine. If you want to come to these altars, I strongly encourage you to make that altar. Have you ever said that? And it's the time you're one of those little things. You'll go to a person that's going to 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 so right now today, maybe you've reached that ceiling. You, it's there, and you're like, I'm not going anywhere different. Begin to ask God what you need to do. What do I need to replace something with so that I can take that next, next step in you? All right? Sister Donna, I'm going to find me a place to pray, guys. Uh, I wasn't just preaching to you this morning. I'm going to have to get Sister Connie to rub my feet because he stomped my toes pretty hard all day. God's good with you, but however you want to pray, let's do it.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
That's all we've been doing right now. Since we're
that as we minister today, you've heard the word. I want to ask you, what would it take for you to make that next step and that next level in healing? That's, when I say that, that's not a bad thing because we're always striving to be better. We're always striving to take the next step. But I want to ask you, what is the next step for you? How do you reach that next level? Amen? What is it going to require for you to reach that place? This is only an answer that you and, and God can have. But if you'll promptly seek Him and ask Him, what is the next level for you? And what do I need to do to reach that? Maybe it's give something up. Maybe it's just move closer to Him. That's between you and Him. But whatever that step is, would you seek God and ask Him earnestly? Now listen, by doing that, you have to be truthful to yourself. Amen. When God reveals it to you, you can't say, no, no, that's not, that's not Him. But when God tells you what it is, in order to make that next step, you've got to make those, you got to do those things to reach Him. Amen. So this week... I know. School's out, kids. Don't. You've not been to school in a while. You got homework. Do a self-check. Amen. Sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to check ourselves. Sometimes we're not quite in line. A chiropractor, you go to a chiropractor and put your, put your bones back in line. Sometimes we get ourselves out of line. And we need God to put us back where we need to be. Amen. And sometimes when you go to a chiropractor, he tells you you got to come back multiple times in order to get reset because you've been out of line for too long. Sometimes that can be the same way for us and God. He says you got to come back again. And you got to come back again to get reset so you can get yourself lined up like you need to. That's pretty good, huh? God's good. Thank you, Lord. I've not been to a chiropractor in a long time, so I know when I go to him, he's going to tell me everything's out of whack. Sometimes we get away from God long enough that he tells us everything's out of whack. <laughs> and it takes a little while. Thank you, Lord. Who would have thought you could preach on a chiropractor? Are we good? Uh, before we dismiss, well, I, I ask you if you're good. How many of you believe God's good? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. All the time, right? Amen. Uh, Sister Smith is with us today. Everyone got to see Sister Smith, right? But we want to pray a special blessing for her today. Uh, Sister Brenda asked us if we could do that. And I'm going to ask all of you that would either you can come around over here and you pray with her or if you'll just stretch your hands out to her. But we miss Sister Smith. And I am so glad that she's present with us today. Uh, what a not, there's no better way to end the service than to be able to be with Sister Smith and pray with her. Thank you, Lord.
Praise the Lord. Everybody good? Brother Brian? Pray for us, brother. No service tonight, guys. No service tonight.
Good to be here. Hey, y'all ladies done an excellent job. You know what I mean? 